and J Mac, Jess and Jazz, live from your local Houston BMW Center Studio. Man, I'm super excited about the guest we have on the show. He's a living legend. My uncle is in the building. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's sure. you all the time I'm so happy that you're even here with us I'm smiling but just to know that last year you were in a coma for like two months and we did not know if you were gonna make it or not so this is a testimony you being able to sit across from us mm -hmm. in this studio right now mm. because your life was saved absolutely you listen don't let anybody tell you God is good chicken is good God is truly amazing mm. let the church say amen amen, amen. amen. You know amen. Hi, how you feeling I'm feeling blessed and highly favored. Um, today's a very special day. You know, first of all, it's nice to see you. You pumpkin. too. You too. I know you've grown up, but you're still my pumpkin. You, you know, I love you. <laughs> you know, I love you so much. You know, Uncle, come on, man. I, I, listen, I appreciate the love, and, and I just walked in a very blessed frequency on a daily basis, mm -hmm. um, just to be here, knowing that one year ago today. Um, you know, I was I was down for the count, mm -hmm. and I don't like to use the word coma so much anymore. So what I say is, I was updating my software. Oh, mm -hmm. updating during that pro time that you were updating your software. Do you feel like you've now found true purpose in life? Well, you know, I think my spirit of discernment has elevated, um, but I've always had a purpose, but it was part one. Mm -hmm. So this is now giving me part two, and that's why I'm glad to be here. Um, you know, it, you know very specifically participating um, with the wonderful, wonderful medical professionals at Methodist, Houston Methodist Hospital. You know, I'm from New York, mm -hmm. so coming here, I was actually visiting my dearest friend growing up, Eddie F. Presents, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Mr. Edward Farrell, CHCO. What's up, <laughs> How you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I was here visiting, and thank goodness, because obviously Houston has some of the best medical care on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, one thing led to another, Eddie introduced me to Dr. Kosla. Dr. Kosla was like Beethoven and kind of put everything together to make sure that my medical care, because I went down so fast. Mm. And uh, the person who probably describes it best is my doctor. Mm -hmm. Now, number one, I have to say this because this is significant to me. Um, a black woman mm. did my surgery, my liver transplant surgery, one of the best in the world, Dr. Constance M. Mobley. Mm. MD, PhD, Elemental P, QRST. <laughs> I good, mean, good morning. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm just happy to be here with Alvisha <laughs> and all of you guys. This is an amazing, um, amazing story to talk about. He's an amazing patient. I can't imagine anyone more grateful, um, giving back. You know, doing well, thriving. He he's an amazing person. You saw when he was down, when you first saw him and, and he came into the hospital, what was your first thoughts? Um, if we don't get to him soon enough, he's going to die. Mm. Wow. I mean, he, um, he was, I mean, I don't, no, he, he no. was, this is, this is why we're here, Doc. He was, uh, in multi-system organ failure is what we call it, but his, uh, likelihood of surviving was probably less than 10 percent what yeah his uh we talk about this as far as mortality rates and he had something called acute on chronic liver failure um aclf4 and a 28-day mortality rate of upwards of 90 percent most people will die within 28 days wow Oof. so imagine you know again you know being here, blessed and visiting, you know, that yet. And, you know, as, as in tradition, you know, we're doing business and talking about music and things, and just life and just going over stuff. And so I happened to go down while we were working on something here. And um, I just, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know. I was just, I was grateful that, you know, you orchestrated putting this together and, and getting me to the right places. Um, um. I'm just thinking about just reliving just just um, when we took the ride over to to get you over to the um, check in the Methodist mm -hmm. and um, I can remember you all I saw was 22 inch rims and the side of my and I remember being held and lifted into a into a, an escalator or something yeah, and I could truck. just see something and then I passed out I guess I was bleeding everywhere it was just crazy. yeah so we um had to lift him up and put him in my um 
truck and get him over to the um, check-in at the hospital. And I was on the line uh, with Dr. Kosla, and he he basically says, as soon as they register his name in the system, you just call me as soon as he's in. Hmm. Um, so we got him checked into the system, and I called Dr. Kosla, and he said, you know, uh, and this was like, this was like the movies when it's kind of like when you're spinning around, it's just, you know, you don't know. It's like surreal. Um, talked to Dr. Costa. He said, I'm on it. Um, next thing you know, there was a, um, there was a team of, of medical professionals with a stretcher coming down to get, to get out, out of the, um, out of the wheelchair. Cause all I remember is looking up and I see security surrounding me mm -hmm. and Eddie, Eddie put me in the corner in a wheelchair and I can just remember moving. I looked up and I see Eddie and he looked at me and says, you're right. I said, I don't think so. Oh my God. So at that point, I really felt like, you know, I was, it, was, it was a wrap, for lack of a better term. Um, Doctor, what leads to a condition like this? So if there's any um, underlying liver failure um, or liver disease, um, from multiple causes it could be from, then any other inciting event can make you get sicker quicker. So um, I know he had had some other things going on and hadn't been feeling well, and that's enough to make his liver then completely decompensate. And so it stops carrying out the functions that it usually does, so your blood doesn't clot and you bleed. You um, can go into respiratory failure, your heart doesn't function well, you can't think clearly, something called hepatic encephalopathy where you're just very confused. Um, sometimes you can't talk clearly, um, sound uh, very, um, almost like you're having like a stroke or something mm. like that. Um, and so when he, when he arrived at the hospital, Dr. Kozel actually called me. We worked very closely with him with a lot of uh, patients. And so he called me and said, you know, we have this patient who's really sick. Um, I think he's going to need a liver transplant. So when he came to us, we went through an emergent um, review board, which we have to do for all patients who are listed for liver transplant. We got him listed and then waited for an organ to arrive for him. But, you know, during that time, he was on as much support as you can be on in the ICU. He was on a ventilator to control his breathing. 38 um, yeah. But he had really bad uh, lung function. He had something called ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome, which in and of itself, if a patient has that alone, carries up to as severe as he did. He had severe ARDS, um, can carry up to a 50% mortality rate. On top of that, he was in renal failure. Um, complete he, organ failure, right? Yeah, yeah, complete organ failure. His wow. heart wasn't working. He was on medications to keep his blood pressure up and his heart beating. Um, he was bleeding. He got multiple, multiple transfusions of blood. Um, he had infections that we were fighting on powerful antibiotics, you know, everything. So there was some shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to leave that part. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. dialysis, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And this, we're talking about a, a year ago. One yeah. year out. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a year ago. One year. Can, can I ask, do you remember, like, when you came out of it, what was your first thought? I was hungry. <laughs> 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 um, I, you know, when I, I woke up, I, I saw um, Eddie Farrell's face. You know, cause I, it was almost like a childhood thing, but imagine I had gone through this journey being in a coma. So the entire time I was in water. So, and that could have, now doctor, you mentioned to me, part of that could have been because you said that my lungs filled to capacity and I could with not water. breathe with water. My right. lungs filled up with water and I had to do what's called, a, see I think I, I don't have any symbols behind my name. But I'm learning these things. <laughs> um, the paracentesis. Yeah, so we had to remove fluid from his abdomen. There was fluid that was built up in his lungs, which is why he couldn't breathe. And he was on the ventilator. We were trying to remove that with the dialysis, but his lungs were flooded with um, with water, essentially. Um, he he was he couldn't even push oxygen into his lungs anymore. The ventilator we had at maximal settings just to try and push enough oxygen into into his lungs. Was there ever a point where you guys said, we don't think we can help the situation? Yes. There was, 
multiple times where he was too sick to go to the operating room. Um, and we tried to get him stable enough to, uh, to go to the operating room. I will say it's, you know, kind of everything that happened with him happening to be in Houston and here because there are a lot of liver transplant centers in the world who take care, wonderful care of a lot of patients. But patients who are this sick, there are as many who can handle someone who's this sick. And he was fortunate and blessed to be here in Houston. Mm. Speaking of fortunate and blessed, not everybody is fortunate and blessed and not everybody has the funds um, to get on the other side. And this is why you're having this walk coming up. Can you talk to us about the liver walk? Absolutely. Well, um, one of our angels here who's uh, Annalisa Lopez, who is the head of DEI, right? Did, did, Hello, good morning. Annalisa Lopez, project manager over our minority outreach program at Houston Methodist Hospital, J.C. Walter Jr. Transplant Center. And so my role is to bring awareness that Houston Methodist has identified some discrepancies in our system where we can be more culturally sensitive and culturally mm -hmm. competent to our minority groups, not only in the greater Houston area, but surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. And that's how I connected with our wonderful patient, I'll be sure. And uh, so immediately, you know, my entire movement and, and everything related to this part two of my journey is about advocacy and about, you know, same thing I did, as, you know, as a young kid when I was hustling, you know. Mm -hmm. Cause as you know, we talked about, you know, I'm working on my book right now, I'm working on my movie, you know, my life story. And, you know, going over those that part of the story, I start remembering these things and it, and it you know, just comes full circle that, you know, I don't do anything to come in second place. Hmm. And that's not, there's no arrogance to it. You know me, there's mm -hmm. no an arrogant bone mm -hmm. in my body, but meaning that I'm going to fight to the end. Mm -hmm. So if I'm given a second chance in life, I'm going to fight as hard to assist others as well. It's kind of mm -hmm. like what Eddie F does with everybody in Uptown Records. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From the, I'll be sure to Mary J. Blige, the Joe the to, you know, the, you know same, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a, maybe it's a Mount Vernon thing, but I met so many <laughs> amazing people here in, in Houston that uh, who feel the same way. But um, we call her Annie Angel, and one of our, one of our many angels there, and a uh, very special lady, and she, uh, she says, hey, you know, we're, we're working on this project with the American Liver Foundation. Um, you know, how would you like to get involved? And, and I guess they didn't expect me to, you know, jump all the way in. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, you know, if, if I talk to my mama, she's going to look, don't do, don't do nothing halfway. You know? Ooh, so, right. you know, so that's, you know, that's kind of the law of how it, you know, how it works. And, and I said, well, please use me. Utilize me Come to on. the best of, mm -hmm. of, of what I can do for my, with my platform. You know, I, I was... I, every time I look at this, I'm sitting here in front of you. And it's, it's a letter from the White House here from Kamala Harris, you know, and, 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 the, and what's the proper terminology? The first man, the first husband, the first husband, <laughs> the first husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, sent me this beautiful letter of, of uh, get well. Mm -hmm. So I have a thing I teased Dr. Morley and I said, I'm just glad I can be, I'll be here to read this letter. Amen. <laughs> 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 like Truly. I, just like I said, just like what I do with, with, with you know, our higher powers. I blame you for everything amazing. Mm. So I blame Dr. Moby for me living. Mm. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, absolutely. And, uh, so, so we decided, you know, the idea was introduced to me and say, how would you like to get involved? And I said, well, if I'm going to you know, put my name on this and, and walk in my testimony, let's see what we have here. And there was an opportunity to co-chair or actually chair this Houston uh, launch of Liver life walk. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I had to give it a flip and I called it the New Jack Liver Life. I love it. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> keep it New Jack. Yeah. Um, you know, shout out to Teddy Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Eddie. And, uh, you know, so we, uh, it was just significant to me to, you know, go all the way in. And you know, I started to reach out to just a little bit of everybody mm -hmm. in the industry. Um, people don't know, there, there are some other, uh, I don't like these other celebrities, or personalities who have. Had transplants. I think like I think it's maybe Ariana Grande or somebody mm -hmm. who Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. Yeah. Yeah. Kidney transplant. She has a hundred million followers. You know, and, and God bless her. And I'm glad that she's here. I want her to do more. You know, because it's so important to get this word out to do so. And by doing these walks, I think we're probably planning maybe 15 around the country. Oh wow! Yes. I think That's we true. have New York coming up. We have Arizona. We have you know a bunch of different walks. But it's basically to bring awareness because. 
now tell me, doctor, if I've learned properly, um, the liver is the most important organ in your body. You can pump a heart. You can work with your kidneys, right? There are machines that can do that. There's no machine to work your liver. Am I, am I correct, doctor? That's correct. Okay, see, so yeah, okay. I do that. He learned it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's just all about being grateful, paying it forward. Mm -hmm. And I always say this, and I don't speak in a morbid nature, but I say it like this. I'm blessed enough to still be here. You know, people say, oh, it's so good to see you. You don't look like what you've been through. You know, they used to come up to me all the time. I can be anywhere. It's like 1988 everywhere I go. So I'd be like, yo, dog. <laughs> and they'd be like, yo, dog. Yo, I got so much. I'm like, okay, I know what you're going to say. And then people also come to me, hey, LP, man, you put this joint out, and I was having a baby. I was getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. I was getting married. You know, I was, you know, I was, going, I was doing finals. There's always some story. Mm -hmm. Now everybody sees me in the airport, in the street, you know, out here in these Houston streets. Yeah. And they lean over and they look at me and they go, Sometimes they, they start to cry, and I start to cry and all that. And then they look at me and say, I'll be, we've been praying for you. Mm. We've been following your journey. And you just never know. Now, I don't want to ruin my whole secret garden vibe, but I'm a little bit of a cornball. I'm into, I'm into <laughs> studying <laughs> analytics and data and things of that nature. But understanding the magnitude of this story and how many people it's touched yeah. has been most gratifying for me outside of me still being here on this side of the grass. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and seeing the, the effect that people are like, man, because you have no idea, especially, but it's all generations, white, black, purple, mm -hmm. green, orange, atheist, Catholic, Muslim, like across the board, I didn't realize that everybody's going through something. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've been so much of a hermit, but mm -hmm. this, everybody has health issues and everybody has stuff. It's in the food. Absolutely. And, the, and sometimes it's also in the shenanigans in the industry. Okay. But do, do we... We got time. We're on the hip hop station, right? <laughs> Hello. Oh, you know where I started. You know I like to talk. Come on. Come on. You know where I started, right? Yeah. Hip hop. Yes. Mount Vernon. Money under Mount Vernon. <laughs> DJ Eddie F. I'll be sure. He was the. It's like this is before Fresh Prince and, uh -huh. and, and, and DJ Jazzy Jeff. It was Eddie F. And I'll be sure. And doing parties from Mount Vernon High School. He was the best Crazy. DJ in Westchester. We did, I, I just was the roadie, so I used to carry Eddie's equipment around. And I just want to be there because I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to say he didn't carry, we all carried records. Okay. Like that. So and we had a gremlin. Yeah. And we, we stuff had all the, the AMC gremlin. We got <laughs> stuff all the equipment in. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I would help host, help host the parties. Um, I was his flavor flavor. Yes. <laughs> he was Chuck D. He was, he was yes. And I, was, yes. I was, I was yes. like the hype man. You yes. Know? And then, um, then we also, um, you know, Heavy D was part of, um, wow. our, you know, our, our, our crew. And then, God rest his soul. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and our other brother, Navelle Hodge, who plays the keys. We, mm -hmm. we kind of had a collective in the basement mm -hmm. and we would um, make demos. And then, um, and then we got um, a, a deal of Uptown, Heavy D and the boys. And then, um, you know, my brother here, um, I just always kept his his demo with me. Cause you could say cassette. 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 Yeah. 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 All the young people that little Listen. classic thing yeah. that, 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 that you took. Yeah. yeah. We took from my mother. Yeah. She had some gospel tape, so we oh. broke the hole in it. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and you all have some tissue in the car. And we brought it over. Tissue in there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 So um, I would keep his. Um, we got in the door, and I said, you know, I'm gonna definitely um figure out a way to get my brother in the door and gave his um, demo to mm. Andre Harrell who then the you know, Andre presented Harrell. it to, yes, yes, you know, the great Andre Harrell. We all owe debt of oh, gratitude man. to him for, for our whole musical existence. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. and shout yeah. out to him. We love him. And Andre um, got that demo to the great Quincy Jones who, you know, then selected Al to be, you know, the Sony innovator, uh, and, you know, the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah. It's history. Yeah. And it all started, wait, watch this, and it all started when we had a flood in the basement. Yeah. Because NES basement was the, so you got Pete Rock coming in. Yeah. Before there was Whoa. a Pete Rock, you got uh, you know, CL Smooth, you yeah. had all the people, all the young kids from Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. Eddie's basement was a safe haven to create. So this is why we love, you know, blessings yeah. if I'm allowed. Yes, um, absolutely. Eddie, Eddie, you know, just lost his mom, Sorry which is my mom, which is all me. Like she, she was the most amazing, but she let us create, created a safe haven and 
never said nothing. She would just come down and say, Albert, did you do your homework? You know, <laughs> did, you, did you call your mama? Make sure she knows you're here. You know, so she, but she was that for the entire neighborhood, which allowed us to create a safe place. Because otherwise, I was, I was, I was hustling. Yeah. And I would get the, you know, come here right after football practice. Don't mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. Just come straight. Here. So you know, I'm just, I'm just grateful. Like I'm in super, ill, grateful mode related to just life, everything. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just in a, in awe of y'all brotherhood after all these years. Like just to have him here still supporting you during your journey and you just, you know, back to health and stuff like that. It's just amazing. You don't see that every single day. No. Two legends and y'all are just still rocking. Oh, bless you. Bless you, Pumpkin. I appreciate you. Man. It's just, I'm just getting um, just hearing some of, you know, sometimes when you're in a situation, you don't mm -hmm. realize the magnitude and just hearing the doctor talk about the mortality rate. And, you know, I've just been getting emotional just mm -hmm. thinking about the journey and just us starting as um, kids from high school, just mm. wanting to get a record deal and all the things that happened. A lot ignorance, of times- Ignorance is bliss. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> we like, and I like to say we were, we, were, we were too crazy to know that you couldn't just go to Pick Def Jam gym. and request a meeting with Russell Simmons. We just went. You just went there, you're like, yeah. You know, Whoa. I knew that he was uh -huh. sick, but, and I knew he needed help, but not now hearing the doctor say how close he was to it just it just makes me really emotional to um just our journey mm -hmm. um and just thinking about all the things that happened and and be one of the things before uh maybe a year and a half ago before uh, my mom passed i was talking to her and i said um i said you know uh, Al's coming to Houston, you know, we're no, going to like, reconnect. You, no, you and didn't. She says, no, you did. You said Albert. You said, it, well, <laughs> so my, my mom says to me, um, you know, it's so nice to have a, have a friend for so, for so long. Mm -hmm. So just to, right. to yeah. just, you know, to kind of like, you know, reaffirm what you just said. Mm -hmm. you, you know, my mom was saying that, you know, she was talking about how great it was to just have a friend and a friendship for so long. Because she remembers she us in the basement. Albert, the boy from the basement. <laughs> <laughs> the Do you still basement. talk to Albert, the boy from the basement? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's Albert Shore? Right. Like, what, mom? <laughs> yeah. No, this is before. But, but watch this. This is before. This is before I had the name Albert Shore, which I got from Eddie F. When we oh, were in wow. high school. So it was just everybody called me Al B. So it was a Halloween weekend. Um, I, I'm living for these stories, by the way. <laughs> I'm like living for these so, stories right now. So, so it was a Halloween weekend. We were booked to do a party. Well, Eddie was booked, you know, carrying equipment. We're going, got the mics rocking. And I think that particular year, a rapper named Dana Dane mm -hmm. came out with a song called Nightmares. So Eddie's rocking, boom, boom. And Eddie had a way of making the record talk because, you know, it was the beginning of scratching. Back then. So it's a bit. Technique 1200s, right? Yes. See, I remember that. <laughs> when you wake up from a coma, I tell you, you remember that. <laughs> so, Mine uh, sharp. This is this was the beginning of scratching and, you know, making the, but he used to make it talk. Like, uh, 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 all that, uh, that uh, transformer, because, mm -hmm. you know. So fast forward, the, the record said, um, I said, listen, Dana, Dana, I think I have the cure, but I have to hear a motor for I'll be sure. But he wasn't saying, I'll be sure, it was I'll be sure, but Eddie would cut the record, uh, 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 oh, I'll be. Okay. So the whole night he would cut it right before the end of the party. Eddie would cut the record, uh, 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 I'll be sure, 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 sure. That next Monday morning in school, everybody's calling me Albie Shaw. Mm. I have no idea. How wow. I mean. <laughs> That's how silly the story is. Wow. <laughs> is it crazy? Yeah. It's a music history right it's here. Crazy. Yeah. This is it. crazy. We, got, we have so many stories. And it, it should, but you know what? I, I, in, in grateful mode, I'm just blessed that we are here to be able to still tell the stories. Folks, is trying to not allow us to tell the stories. Mm. But um, my God is much greater. Come on. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on. Stuff, you know, Come on. So, um, you, you talked about the impact that you have at different places now, and you know things happen, you know, for a reason, right? As cliche as that sounds, but you know your purpose is now to find uh, the passion and everything that's behind it, um, the way that you've um, dove into making, you know, and being part of, of this organization and now this walk. Um, you know, I know people are listening right now, and they want to be involved. They want to help um, people who have personally been affected by different types of liver problems and issues. 
um, you know, we, we want to give them that information too, where they can get involved and, and help out. Okay, well first, thank you. for Nice to see you too. <laughs> nice yeah. to see you too. First of all, uh, I think the first thing we can do as I created was called a vanity URL, so we made it real simple. Mm -hmm. If you go to albshore, A-L-B-S-U-R-E, albshore.net forward slash liver life walk. That'll take you directly to the American Liver Foundation page. Click join, make sure you join the team mm -hmm. if you want to make a donation. But there's so much information there that you can, where you can get involved on the level that you choose to get involved. Mm -hmm. And it's what an amazing organization. And again, I have to thank Annalisa, um, Angel Annalisa, <laughs> uh, for the introduction to um, just the organization and just having the mindset because you know how it is. I mean, you you in the entertainment industry, you know, they're in the medical side. They're like, oh, I ain't gonna do nothing. It's mm -hmm. gonna get by the time we leave here. So I made it a point that every time I go to the hospital. I look for air. I go to the oh. liver ICU. Mm, I go visit that. everybody if I have to bring some coffee and some uh, M&M's and so, <laughs> you know, all the stuff I can't eat. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, but just to, you know, and I didn't understand that because when I first woke up, they said, oh, yeah, just make sure you come back and see us. And then when I would return, the first time I remember, I walked into the liver ICU and I saw Dr. Mobley standing there. Mm. I got so ghost. <laughs> it was like I saw a ghost. It was like, yo. I was like, lady, queen, empress, doctor, um, thank you. Mm. What do you say? Mm -hmm. What do you say? And then I, because I remember looking at my chest, the big, perfectly cut, um, Oh, no, excuse me, let me say it right. Perfectly, uh, I have what's called a chevron, where Dr. Mobley had to open up my entire chest and to, uh, what is that cut called when you peel it? Because, because you know it's different, like you know how you do it, excuse me. You <laughs> so you, and she had to open me up to do the surgery. What, can you explain, what is it like inside my chest? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know this is the first time we're having this conversation wow, in the really? meeting. So. Before you ask that real quick, when, when he told you thank you, because a lot of times when you're in the hospital, you don't get to go back and thank the doctors that worked on you and helped you and, and the reason why you're here. How did you feel when he said thank you? So I know that he, I knew he had been doing very well. He was an excellent patient. I mean, from the moment he woke up, he was like focused on getting back to health, getting out of the hospital and getting back to his life. So he was like, where's physical therapy? Where are they today? I'm mm -hmm. ready to get up. I need to work. I need to put in the work. So he was always doing. You did very get the reports, huh? Oh yes. <laughs> I know. He says he didn't see me, but I I follow every every when you went over to rehab everywhere every day. I was getting. Mm -hmm. I had little spies. Um, they keep oh no, they to, told me. Did you see that? I was like, where's Doctor? Yeah. Because you, I heard you were always checking on me. Yes. That was so amazing. But so I actually, and I would actually get the videos because I couldn't always be there. I was in the OR, so I was like, if he walks. I want to see it. Yeah. And they would take the video and like, okay, he walked today. Um, okay. So I knew he was doing very well, but I hadn't gotten to see him standing up bright and walking himself. So well, I was... you remember when I woke up, I had, you know, several had tubes in my nose. I had, I was on oh, dialysis. Yeah. I had so much going on. I couldn't walk. I couldn't tie my shoes. I couldn't speak. I had a tracheostomy. Yeah. I had these, everything was, I mean, it, I had no functionality. Like what people take for granted as being mm -hmm. normal, walking, brushing your teeth, tying your shoes. Yeah. Zero on the strength. <laughs> Can you sing still? It's back. Yeah. Yes. yes. It's back. It's, it's back. My first date, Madison Square Garden. What? Shut up. November 11. <laughs> Baby face. <gasps> That's all I'm gonna say. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? oh yeah. October London. John oh, October London. Oh, let me just tell you really quick. John since B. we're on it, okay. the truth, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, Marvin Gaye, is that you? Like, <laughs> and like, we used to, and we obviously, we were executives at Motown, so when you mm. remember the whole, you know, not that we were there when Marvin Gaye was there, yeah, but, yeah. but part of the legacy. Yes. You know, he's the truth. Oh, so we got John B. October <sighs> London, headlining Babyface, hosted by Albie Shaw and Funkmaster Flex. It's going Ooh, down. I'm crying right now. It's going yes. Down. I'm and, crying. And then right I'll now. be back on the road just a little bit. Not much, mm -hmm. because I'm starting the movie 
about my life mm-hmm. finally, and I'm doing the book, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm happy for I'm so proud of you. I'm happy for you. Oh, oh man. Uh, I really you. am. And just a sorry. great testimony. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you. And, and first of all, thank you for having us on. What's, what's something that we, um, we want to eliminate any disparity or any, um, anything related to when I first got here, I was on, okay, fill me in on the name of your highway here. Which one, 59? I think it was 59, what's, what's the, yeah, okay, let's just say 59. The, the, the point of the story was, I'm driving, there was an, a major accident in front of me. An 18 wheeler hit this car, smashed it into the, the side, and it looked like a lot, of, lot going on. So, I'm a New Yorker, what do I do? I pulled my skid off and pulled my car and blocked the whole freeway, the highway. And I'm trying to direct traffic at first and I'm trying to check because there's a young man in the car but I can see in the window, the young man is bleeding hugely from the head, the, the windows crashed, whatever, so on and so forth. So I'm trying to make my way over to him, I get to him and I look at him and, I, and I'm trying to just check to see if he's breathing but because his head is on the glass and the glass is broken, the head is bleeding. And I'm like, young man, are you okay? You good? You good? You good, son? And I'm trying to get him to respond because I don't want to hit the window too hard. And he kind of looked at me. Hey, OG, I'm all right. I'm all right. I said, but well, please sit still. I'm going to call I'm going to call the ambulance. Right? <laughs> and, so I'm going to call the ambulance. Sit still. Don't move. And then he, he like, looked over and he hit, the, he hit the window. Hard. He said, no, OG, don't, please don't do that. Don't, don't call no ambulance. I can't tell my mother. I can't, my mother can't afford for me to go to the hospital. Oh, wow. So watch this. That young man who's probably got a broken neck, broken this, bleeding, his first thought was the cost of the health care for his mama. So I had to do everything outside of like, pick him up, pick the car myself on some, on some incredible hope, you know, adrenaline, to be like, nah, I'm not going for that. If I have to pay for your hospital bill, I'll figure out, I'll do some extra shows or something. Mm. You know, I'm wow. not playing with you. You're going to the, no, sir, please, please don't call my mama, don't tell her that. Don't tell her she can't afford this. You know? And Dr. Mobley and I had this conversation frequently longer with Annalisa because this is what you do with Methodists related to DEI and trying to create something. You know, I, I was having conversations also with, uh, you know, Tony Crump. It's now time to, uh, you know, Reverend Sharp, and it's now time to create legislation, some sort of, like, this is where I'm going with this. Mm-hmm. This is not just Alvy Show. Mm-hmm. On stage, I'm that dude. Off stage, this is the real stage, mm-hmm. life stage. Mm-hmm. So I need to be involved with creating some sort of legislation, meeting with the minds, the medical minds, the brilliance, the, the people who create the the, the, the opportunities and, and and the you know the infrastructure to figure out how do we remove the disparity related to us, mm-hmm. related to the community, so that mm-hmm. we don't turn it away. The first thing we say is no, thank you, sir. No, thank you. I'm bleeding, but I can't. Wow. You know, why do we do that? Because uh, because of the way the current structure of mm-hmm. the system is. So each day I'm educating myself more and more, speaking to, you know, I, I spent the weekend at a fundraiser for uh, Sheila Lee Jackson okay. and Attorney Crump and, and all of the constituents in the government here um, and got an opportunity to meet people who are involved with legislation and some of the government officials. and. That's been my talk. I, you know, they'll come up to me and start talking about music, and I want to talk about a liver transplant. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. You know, so forgive me, but that's my. No, journey. but you know what? The music and what you've gone through allows you to have the platform to do so. Music is medicine, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's understanding your assignment in life, mm-hmm. and you under you fully understand your assignment in life, and a lot of people don't. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't. And so people are walking around not understanding what their purpose is or what they should be doing, and that's why they don't feel fulfilled. You understand it. And you understand that what you went through is not in vain. Like, it was necessary in order for you to have a walk like this and impact people like Mm -hmm. this because you've been through it now. So, yeah, they're going to listen to you because, one, you're Albie Shore, but, yeah, Albie Shore has been through it, too, and he got to the other side of that, and now I want to help you. You know what Mike Tyson said to me? He said it very clearly. He said, look, to get to this place of calm, you've got to go through the tsunami. Mm. And I've been through the tsunami. Mm-hmm. I'm realizing the tsunami now because, so I have a new podcast coming, we're about to launch, it's called Don't Let the Love Songs Fool You. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Dad, we show podcast. Okay. The first episode, I'm interviewing all of the doctors who worked in concert wow. to save my life. That's dope. So imagine going through this editing process of all the footage and stuff of our interviews, because I didn't want to do an interview, so when we taped it, we just talked. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time me hearing actually how sick I was, mm, wow. all of the surgeries. I mean, just give me one, one of the things, like, so we just did a press release this week and it's all over, so 10,000 press outlets and media outlets, and you had, there's a quote from you in, 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 the, uh, in the press release. Can you give us that quote again, just talking about how sick I was? Um, the, yeah. uh, the specific quote, I'm not, Sure, or just no, but you know it. You but I know how sick. Mm -hmm. So like the he sickest was, patient. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was definitely as sick as any patient we've ever seen. Certainly more sick than most. Uh, most centers are able to manage and be able to get to transplant and successfully um, and successfully uh, transplant. He was so sick at the time when, when we met that most people with the severity of disease would have died within 28 days. 90% mm. 90, 90 of the patients perish with his level of multi-organ failure. And the fact that he was able to get through it was a miracle. Mm -hmm. It's a testament to his spiritual, psychological, and physical reserve. Mm. 100%. And he's, um, he has been... Just, I mean, if I, if every patient were like him, my job would be so yeah. easy, mm -hmm. so easy. And just think, we're outside, probably going on the radio, and Doctor Mobley said, "Hey, I'm a little nervous going on the radio. I'd rather be doing liver transplant." <laughs> 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 so you know how it is in radio. We say, we say, okay, we're gonna open the mic, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're just gonna open a chest. <laughs> but she's not That's nervous. She is. says, "Oh, I'm more comfortable just cutting your chest open. No, I'm just I'm oh, holding wow. your heart in my hand." Ooh. I'm like. That is crazy. I know. You see, you see the reaction is the same. Right? That is crazy. That's what I'm saying. It's crazy. Just imagine it she's, got, she's inside your situation. Right? She's yeah. Like, we got a situation here. You know, he's actually um, been a great advocate for liver health with the Liver Life Walk and is able for us to promote multiple aspects of what we do. Mm -hmm. Not only trying to promote better health for everyone, but definitely, you know, what's important to me is in the minority community, yep. being a black woman. Um, being a black woman, a surgeon, <laughs> in a mm. very male-dominated world, but it's less a transplant surgeon, you know. It's, so mm. it's very important um, for for me personally to give back. We do that on multiple fronts, both um, from outreach and community, um, which Annalisa is um, very instrumental in. Houston's one of the most diverse cities in yeah. the country, if not the most diverse. And still there's such inequity in access to health care. I think one of the things that's important to me is, you know, when every patient arrives, that they get treated like I would want my mom treated yeah. or my sister mm -hmm. treated, you know, and making sure that they're getting the exceptional health care that they deserve. Mm -hmm. And so um, I try to, I'm actually vice chair of DEI in our Department of Surgery. And so I'm working on programs to get high school kids and college kids interested in science yeah. and um and giving them opportunities that they may not otherwise have to um, help their careers and get mm -hmm. them into colleges. And then on the other front as well, I think the legislation is key. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of changing and giving everyone uh, financial access to health care is, is, without that, you know, we're all hamstringed, mm -hmm. you know, in what we can do. So this Saturday, the walk is going down, right? This Saturday at McGregor Park. Uh -huh. 8 a.m. sharp. You gotta get the 8 a.m. sharp. Um, it's gonna be actually a few surprises too because <gasps> people are flying in from around oh, the country. Nice. I saw some people on Mars, the oh. you know, and uh, it's gonna be an amazing gathering. We're gonna take over the city of Houston. Yes. It's called the New Jack Liver Life Walk, an association with the American Liver Foundation and Houston Methodist Hospital, and um, I'm, I'm excited to. Uh, Walk the walk. Yeah. And then that talk the walk. Mm. Come on, walk, walk the, the walk. walk. And if someone wants to register, where do they go? Albishore.net. Mm -hmm. A L B S E R E. Albishore.net forward slash liver life walk. That's albishore.net mm -hmm. forward slash liver life walk. Register if you've got a 50 cent. What up, 50? <laughs> 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 Big shout out to 50. Big shout out to Drake. I know you're listening somewhere. What up, what up? 
That's the OG. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you have an opportunity, please donate. But also make sure you click Join Team mm -hmm. and uh, come out and walk and, and just celebrate. And we're going to have music. And I think y'all might even be there. Yes. The building. It's yep. just going to be a really a festive time. Yep. Um, and then also, too, um, I think afterwards, I think the entire city is going to meet over. And you got to clue me in on how to say it right. 5015? 5015. 5015. Uh -huh. 50, 50, 50, 50. And I always call it Alameda. Alameda. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's LA, right? Uh -huh. Alameda. 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 Yeah, yeah, big shout out. 5015. Um, and we're going to possibly maybe go over there and have some brunch and enjoy it. We have great brunch, by the way. Oh, yeah. So good. Lots so, of good brunch. So I think I'm going to find myself over there. Yeah. And join and yeah. I love so, that. Uh, come on out and just have, let's have a good time and let's show. Um, and, you know, obviously I got to say a big, big shout out to trade the truth for, for the love and, and, and embracing me in this city. You already know, big mm -hmm. shout out to Bun B mm -hmm. for embracing me. Like he, those are other mm -hmm. brothers that are here. Um, I just went to Trey's uh, listening party. You know, he's got the Stuck in Motion, the brand new album. It's uh -huh. crazy. Why does he sound like 2024 Barry White? <laughs> <laughs> Trey, hold up. Trey's like, he's like, show you. <laughs> if he, if he, I'm sure you're right. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have Eddie F produce a remix of Secret Garden and put. Oh my God. On, on Trey on Barry White. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be Chris Brown. We're gonna be, get the younger people then put Trey on Barry White's part. That's I'll funny. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> we hear you over there. I'll be sure. Yeah, I tell you, the voice is coming. I hear you. I hear you. And coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but thank you also to. First of all, thank you for having me. Um, 97.9 the box. You know I'm a hip hop head first. Uh -huh. Don't let the love songs fool you, like uh -huh. I said. And, and I, I listen every day and then I'm here and I've been flying around the country doing advocacy related to health and wellness and mm -hmm. things of that nature. But of course when I'm home, now it's my new home. Come on. I already know. I'm out in these streets, yo. <laughs> <laughs> you know it is. He's so funny. He's so funny out in these streets. <laughs> Goodbye, I'll be sure. <laughs> See, nobody believe. You don't even believe. Dr. Mobley, thank you so much. And Elisa, thank you so much. Eddie F, thank you so much. I'll be sure. We appreciate this so much. We're just happy to see you here yes. with us. Funky, listen. In the words of Heavy D, I got nothing to love yeah. for you. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> I know I look young, but I know all the songs, okay? Right, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's 97 out of the box. Good, Good morning, H-Town. Good morning, H-Town. Good morning, H-Town. Yeah. <laughs>